today I'm taking a dead YouTube idea and my channel and putting it together to make this video. Let's get started. So for the first game, it's going to be a 10 minute game. Now I'm going to go ahead and create this in Game Maker Studio 2 because I'm more kind of used with it. And I use it more often. And in all honesty, a 10 minute game is something that you've got to work on fast. You can't kind of stop in the middle. So I'm going to do this in Game Maker, but some other games I'm going to do in Unity. So the first thing we're going to do is I'll go ahead and make this project. So the 10 minute game and it's created. So let's start the timer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, get, going to go ahead and create an enemy sprite. And basically what this is going to be is just a very plain kind of um, color. So I'm going to go ahead and create the object enemy. I'm going to also go ahead and create a sprite called S wall and this will be our wall for the map. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and create another sprite and this is going to be a player. And I'm going to go ahead and make the player sort of like a light bluish colour. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and create the object. So the first one I went ahead and created is the O enemy and I'm also going to create the O player. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and create the O wall. So on the O player, I'm going to assign the player sprite and I'm going to go ahead and add a step event. Okay, so I went ahead and created this very simple um, script for the movement. So here is the create event, which is the move speed, the x velocity, y velocity, and the friction. And this is just this small little compact code that allows me to move around and have collisions with the wall. Pretty simple. So now let's go ahead and create the enemy. So for the enemy, let's go ahead and select the S enemy sprite. So the enemy code is very simple. In the create event, I went ahead and set a speed variable. In the step event, I added random motion in 360 degrees. So this is going to be everywhere. And I went ahead and added a bounce um, variable sort of thing when it hits the wall. So now let's go ahead and create the level. This is going to be very simple, we're just going to go ahead and draw the wall like so. And now let's go ahead and add some enemies and let's test this out. So the enemies seem to spaz out like this, so let's go ahead and change that. However, the player can go ahead and interact with the walls quite fine. We still have about five minutes left, so this is perfect amount of time. Okay, so I went ahead and added this very simple um, code. So basically, on the create event, an alarm is going to go off every two seconds. And in the alarm, the direction is going to be a random range between 0 and 3, 5, 9, the speed of 2. And then the alarm gets reset. Now, the wall is still the same, um, except for the fact that it's not solid anymore because the wall wasn't solid earlier. So now it will bounce from everything. Final thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a step event. So once in a certain range. So if distance the um, object, um, for this case, we're going to go O player is basically smaller than for example 50 um i'm gonna do a kind of move towards move towards point and then the x is gonna be um o player dot x comma o player dot y and then at the speed of two um final thing is basically if the distance is more than um 50 and i'm actually going to change this to maybe about 10 because it's a small map um, we're going to make it move away from the player. So I did this very simply for it just to basically restart the timer. So the whole um, timer thing is going to happen again. So let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so I went ahead and tested it out and I had to remove the other thing because um, they didn't move at all. So now I set it to 25 because 10 seemed a little bit too small. And so you can see they're moving randomly. If I come towards them, they'll start chasing me and that happens. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to 50 as how it was before because it seemed to find them. Now we need to go ahead and add a simple collision for the player. So basically if the player collides with the enemy we're just basically gonna restart the game. Okay so in the final few minutes I went ahead and changed the blocks on the outside and added some smaller enemies. So let's go ahead and test the game because the 10 minutes is about to be over. So finally let's go ahead and test the game. And there we go, it should work, and we should be able to escape now. And there we go, this is my um, 10 minute game. Really bad, but it seems to work quite well. So now let's go ahead and move on to the one hour game. Hi guys, Zaga here, welcome to the one hour challenge now. So I'm gonna be trying to create a game in an hour. Now I'm doing this in Unity because I just did one in Game Maker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to kind of um, go a bit advanced with this one. So I went ahead and created a Unity project and I made it in 3D. So we have this like nice kind of 3D area right here. I'm gonna try and make this kind of tumbling cube um, kind of code because I think it'll be quite easy to do. So first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a 3D um, object which is gonna be a cube. This is just gonna be my um, kind of like plane. So this is the thing I'm actually gonna be tumbling on. I'm make it, gonna make it quite nice and wide like so and the thickness is okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do that now is I'm just going to quickly rename this to my um, ground. I'm going to go ahead and make another 3D object. This is going to be a cube and this is going to be um, my player. So what I'm going to go ahead and do as well is just ensure that this is actually over 
the top of the um, what's it called the pane because otherwise it makes no sense to have it like so so if I quickly go into 2d I should be able to kind of shrink the size of it a bit and kind of centralize it so if I go ahead and press play what you notice is we've got a plane and we've got a cube so the cube isn't exactly um, in the center I don't think so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make a quick script that allows me to move them left and right with the arrows so I'll be back once I do that so guys, I went ahead and created the script that allows me to um, have like the movement for the player. And it's very simple and um, I'll go ahead and link you in the description below because it's quite nice. So um, this is what it looks like here for the update. This is what it's here for the bottom bit. It wasn't too difficult, it's quite simple. Now I only did this for the forward and back, but you can um, basically if you guys want so you can go ahead and change this to any input key you want by just replacing the left key or right key to whatever one you want and also if you want to change the direction of it where it says forwards and backwards go ahead and change that to left and right if you wish so let's go ahead and save this script and i'm going to go ahead on my player and i'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this let's go and this is my tumbling duration so 0 0.2 you can go ahead and mess around with that let's place play and have a look there we go, we can go ahead and tumble. Now I'm going to go ahead and set that duration down a little bit maybe. And I'm also going to make sure that the player is actually touching the ground so it looks quite, um, like, um, it's way too fast, my bad. I'm going to change that to like 0.4. And what you'll notice now is the player can go ahead and move on the ground. Now he's not exactly just yet in the ground so let's go ahead and ensure that. And also I'm going to change that to back to my... 0.25 so I'm just gonna play around with this and see when it works so now we go ahead and we have a nice kind of player however this player doesn't have a rigid body of gravity right now so let's go ahead and add a rigid body 2d uh, because it conflicts with the box collider oh we can go ahead and remove this box collider let's add a rigid body 2d so the next thing we have to do is go ahead and add some physics and gravity to this cube so although we can see here here and we can move it it doesn't actually have any gravity so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add a rigid body to the player itself after doing this i added a rigid body and i went ahead and set the gravity to one the angular drag to 0 0.05 drag to zero mass to one you can go ahead and adjust this yourself however much you want now for the ground i went ahead and added a box collider so that i can actually collide with it now when we press play we should be able to have some gravity as you can see the cube dropped and i can go ahead and still move the cube however it can fall off the edge now so this is perfect however now we need to go ahead and set up the code that if it does fall off the game restarts so this is going to be done in a simple detection method so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this ground and i'm going to call this um bottom ground or something around, along the lines of that I'm going to go ahead and drag it down below and I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of it. So the cube can only move side to side so we just need to make sure that it's a little bit bigger than the outside. Now when we press play, um, the cube will actually be dropped on there and you can kind of see it at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure to go ahead and drag that down a little bit lower so the player doesn't actually see this. Let's go ahead and check this out in the player. As you can see we can't see the ground anymore and once we drop we also can't see the player. So now we're going to go ahead and set up a simple collision code. So I'm going to go ahead and call this def collision. And I'm going to go ahead and create and add a script. So now it's time to set up the collisions for the def ground. Now this is going to be very simple. So on the player himself, we're going to go ahead and go into the movement script again. And we're going to basically set up an on trigger collision. So this is very simple. This will basically um, check if the player has collided with anything. And if it has collided, it will create a log in the debug saying collision. So this little bit of code is all you need. Now let's go ahead and check this out. But before we do so, we're going to need to ensure that the bottom ground itself is actually a trigger so that it can be triggered. If we go ahead and press play, what you'll notice is that we have an empty console and if I fall down onto the ground we get a new message saying collision. This means that collision is actually detected. Now we need to make a simple thing of ensuring that the player will die when hitting the collided box. Now to make this um, basically work with all objects we don't want the player to die when colliding with any object we only want him to restart the game and die when hitting this death ground so basically i went ahead and set a death ground tag to this bottom ground i did this simply by going ahead and pressing add tag now what we're going to do is we're going to check that if the collided object has the tag death ground then go ahead and restart the game now this is going to be done very simply we're going to go back to the player and go back to the movement and we're going to go ahead and do this in here 
Okay, so I went ahead and created this little bit of code. So we just added a couple more things. We've kept the same private void on enter trigger thing. And I added, went ahead and added two more lines of code. So the first one is it checks if the tag is actually def ground. So if other game object dot tag is def ground, then go ahead and make a debug log where it says hit the def ground. And then go ahead and create a scene manager, load scene, scene manager, get active scene name. Now this will hopefully restart it. So let's go ahead and test this out and see if the whole collision def thing is working. So if we go ahead and press play what you'll notice is I'm going to quickly open the console tab we can still move around now if we fall the game restarts and we get the message saying hit the deaf ground which I can't spell for some reason once again this restarts the game and this is perfect for us now let's go ahead and create the spawning random objects good so this took quite a while in all honesty because I tried a couple of things out and it wouldn't work. So I only have a few times for um, for a few more things. So the last few things I'm going to do is I'm going to set a nice background. I'm also going to go ahead and change the fact that these crates can't go to the end. I'm going to also add the option that when the crate hits the player, the game restarts. And I'm going to, in general, clean the whole thing up a little bit. So I'll be back once I do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added a few colors and everything is done. The hour is finished, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now. If I go ahead and press play, we have our player here. It has some colors, so does the ground. The crates can fall. You can go ahead and play and try and avoid them. Now, if you fall, uh, like if you hit one, like so, the game will restart and you will respawn once again. So now for the 10 hour challenge, I'm going to take this game and make it even better. Okay, so the first few things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a UI and add some cool background scenery to make this whole level seem quite nice. And in general, have some like trees and things so the game actually looks like it's somewhere and it's not just plain like blocks. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and make the map actually look like a map. And I'm also going to go ahead and add a couple like things here and there. I'm going to like add a score and stuff because currently there is no score. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and fix some bugs because I've been having a lot of bugs throughout this whole kind of like challenge. So I'll be back once I do that. So I did all of that, but now it's time. So now we need to make this game look epic. And bam, we have a menu. And yeet, we have some particles. And pow, pee, boom, we have some effects. May I just say one thing? My keeps kind of thick. Okay guys, so here is the finished product. I've basically did some background, did some post editing stuff, made the high score and all, and kind of just fixed a load of bugs and stuff. So I'm gonna quickly show you what it looks like when I play it. So let's go ahead and put here play. We still have the movement of the cube going like so. You can see the particles of the um, crates when they explode is pretty cool. The high score will work, so if I get a, um, more than nine, you'll see it'll start going up again. And it's kind of an easy game, but I just kind of was trying out, you know, new things and whatnot. Either way, I'm really happy about it. I only spent about 10 hours on it. By the way, I'm still not very familiar with C++, um, C Sharp, sorry. So, this is still an experience. The particles still look kind of janky and stuff. So, what I'm going to do is probably give you guys the source. So, you'll be able to um, kind of, what's it called? work on this yourself if you wish so i'll leave all the links to it in the description below for you guys to go ahead and check out and all and yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the video make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up and subscribe because you guys are growing and it's just amazing so if you watched all this like part of the video thank you very much because you're helping me out a lot either way thanks very much guys and i'll see you guys later bye